Hello everybody! Hi! Alright, so welcome to our lower back seminar. I'm Martin, I'm an acupuncturist. And I'm Dr. Katrina, I'm the chiropractor in Orleans. And we are talking about the lower back. And if you think about it, the lower back is, is really the core of your body. It's like at the center. Whenever we think of the core, a lot of times people think of their abdomen, they're like, their abs, like my core. Yeah. But really the lower back is this area and this is probably by far the number one reason that people call us as an acupuncturist or a chiropractor. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of people uh, suffer from time to time, whether it's chronic or acute, lower back pain. So this seminar is for you. Hopefully uh, you do not have lower back pain, but you probably know and we obviously want to give information to help you prevent to uh, be in this episode. Um, if you haven't been in this episode, you've prob you probably know someone. A very close friend of mine just last week was sitting on the couch watching television for uh, I don't know how long. but Probably I, too long. <laughs> maybe too long. Uh, I asked him, I said, were you like a long time? He said, no, 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 I don't know what happened. This has never happened to me ever. I was just sitting on the couch. I wanted to get up and I realized I couldn't get up. Oh, no. He was stuck. He... The pain was so bad, he couldn't move. Uh, he just, he didn't have his phone, I don't know if he did, but he just like, he was in so much pain, and then like, well, he finally made it up, and he was walking like a duck a little bit. Yeah. And um, he was in, in tremendous pain. He, this is a guy, so he was saying like, this is worse than labor. <laughs> and um, so, um, I know a lot of people that have been in this situation, and yeah. we want to offer some really good information. Um, so as always, uh, we do this live so we can interact with you. If you are coming from far or just from Ottawa, we'd love to know where you're coming from. So please feel free to comment below. You know, at the end of these uh, Facebook Live, we always do a contest, so please stay till the end so you can participate in our contest. We give out prizes. Uh, good prizes, so, and uh, yeah, we're really excited to talk about lower back. Uh, this is something we, we've been doing now. It's kind of a series. Uh, the last one we did, it was... The neck. We, the last one we did was we the did neck. Was on neck pain, yeah, so. we did one on the neck. Uh, you can check out our Facebook page and you can if you missed that one. We, the last one we did one was on... What was anxiety, it? Anxiety. Anxiety. Oh. anxiety yeah. and stress. Anxiety yeah. and stress. And our next one, just so you know, the next one is going to be on fertility and women's health. So um, we hope these these are you find interesting. We hope that you you know you, you get value out of them. We take time to research to prepare, and it, this is not we're not, it's not just winging this. Uh, we've we've had we have notes. We're we're serious <laughs> about this, and we want to offer really good information. So. Let's get started. As always, if you are not new to this, you know that we always start with questions. Yeah. Questions that you can answer, that you can participate if you're not sure. I think these are very valid questions. So it's always kind of questions for uh, that I'm going to ask you to answer. Yeah. Uh, but I also want uh, you, the listeners, to comment below and write your answers as we're going. Um, so my first question, uh, this is not necessarily in order of, I just wrote questions that I think uh, that are pretty, um, I think could be interesting. The first one is on a standing desk. It's been very popular, uh, you know, a, a few years ago it was like, uh, sitting is the new smoking. Yeah. And uh, everybody got, got into standing desk, and so did I, <laughs> I have a standing desk. And I love my standing desk. Uh, it's really good. But um, is a standing desk the solution? Because a lot of us, we work at a desk. We do computer work, desk work. Um, so is a standing desk a better option, a better alternative uh, to help uh, avoid lower back pain? So write your answers. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Are you getting some... Margo and Paul. All right. Hello, okay. Margo. Hello, Paul. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you've had a, a bit of time. Is a standing desk a good option? And what do you think? What are your thoughts on standing desk? Well, I guess I would kind of turn around and say, like, so what's the problem with sitting for too long? So it's because you're not moving. So if you're standing and that means that you're able to change position while you're working, because you're not meant to be in one position for like any length of time. 
um, then the standing desk could be could be helpful. Mm -hmm. But if you're standing and your your posture is poor when you're standing, it's gonna have a similar effect as though you were sitting in the wrong posture. So like if you're you know leaning over to one hip, it's yeah. similar to if you're sitting and you're crossing your legs. Or if you're leaning forward on your desk, even though it's standing, it's similar to slouching in your chair. Yeah. So there'd be different things that you kind of have to assess ergonomically with your workstation. So and what about the ones that go can go up and down? And yeah, so you same thing if you're sitting, you would want like something at your eye level where you're working. Again, if it can go up and down, you can find more comfortable positions for your wrists, for your shoulders. Um, but even little things like when you sit, you'd like your feet flat on the floor. Um, when you're standing, now you're talking about standing on your feet all day. So mm -hmm. like, do you have a floor mat for, for your desk okay. if you're going to be standing on it? So it really depends on if it's assessed correctly and what you're actually doing at your desk. Just standing isn't necessarily the solution because some people get more pain with standing than right. sitting. Right. So. Okay. Um, what about lifting weights? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, maybe you lift weights, maybe you don't, uh, but a lot of people that I talk to are afraid of lifting weights, are afraid of lifting heavier weights, afraid of like doing, injuring, injuring yeah, or... doing a squat or a deadlift. Uh, they don't want to look too heavy because lifting weights can cause lower back pain. Yeah. So I think when you're lifting weights, whether it's like you're doing bicep curls or you're doing something heavier like a deadlift, you have to look at the form of the movement and how you're aligned. So same thing if you're like leaning off to one side, it's good to use a mirror when you're doing something like weights to watch your technique. If you're leaning off to one side or like overcompensating with the bicep lift and doing your, using your whole body. That's gonna put strain on your back or even your neck in different areas. Yeah, you so, see sometimes guys like getting weights that are way too heavy for them. They're like using like exactly. So like, what muscle are you trying to train, and what other parts of your body are working with that? So you know, a lot of people now there's a lot of experienced personal trainers out there. Hmm. Um, if you have low back pain already, it's always good to start with supervised exercise. So if you were lifting weights before, I wouldn't just stop working at all together. But maybe tone it down, make sure that you're loading gradually, especially after an injury. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just watch your form and your alignment most of all so that um, you don't have to push it too hard. Like there might be some discomfort when you're lifting, but you shouldn't be at more than like a, like a 3 out of 10 pain ever with yeah. the kind of weightlifting you're doing. But there's a lot of benefits to resistance training and weightlifting, so I wouldn't shy away from it completely. Yeah, and I think uh, a good point is uh, yes, do it in a smart way. But there are a lot of benefits. Yeah. Keeping your back strong and uh, and um, be able to handle weight. Uh, yeah. If you're never experiencing, uh, if you never challenge yourself, if you never in the moment that you have to lift uh, a bag of topsoil because you have to put some on, and you're like, oh, I'm not using this is heavy and it's like awkward, and then you're like, oh, my back is hurting. Um, well, perhaps if you were you know, lifting more, more lifting regularly, then topsoil wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, well, like, and it depends, too, on, like, the, ma the demands of your job. If you're going to be lifting 50 pounds or, you know, I have one patient, he's a mail carrier for, like, Canada Post, so he's always carrying, like, 50 pounds between the two shoulders. Okay. Or your certain jobs, like paramedics. Like, you can stay in shape by doing things like cardio, but if your work demands are going to require you to lift that kind of weight, that's how you should be training. Okay. You should be training to build up those muscles, and especially the core, like we talked about, because your arms and your legs are acting on your core. So if you want to prevent injury like we were talking about, there are certain exercises you should be doing for your workplace or for the different jobs and demands you have. Okay. Um, so we talked about lifting weights. Uh, we're going to talk about a different form of exercise. Um, and this is kind of popular because of our timing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're talking about running. Running. Because uh, <laughs> if... Uh, there's a lot of you, if you're listening and if you're from Ottawa, that are going to be running this weekend. Uh, Hannah and I are running. Uh, Hannah's doing the 10K, I'm doing the 5K. There's over like, I think, 50,000 people that are running this weekend. Yeah. I'll be but cheering them on. Is, uh, is running bad for you? Like, some people say, oh, I want to avoid the impact, uh, so I don't know if I should be running. If I have lower back pain or my back's stiff or tight. Yeah, so like similar to how I said, if, if you're running and it's aggravating your back, like tomorrow of a 3 out of 10 pain, then you're probably doing too much. But there's ways you can modify how you're running too. You can change your shoes. You can change like the turf, the, like what you're running on. Mm -hmm. So often people who run more on like trails or on dirt, it's 
It's better for shock absorption in the foot. It's less load going up through your heels, your knees, and anything that goes up through your legs is going to get to your back mm -hmm. inevitably, right? So there's a lot of ways you can change how you run. There's like cross training, so you can work with some hills and stuff like that. So just basically anything, if you do it too much, too much of anything can be can be bad for you. But yeah. I think running overall, like we talked about, it is a good form of endurance training. So I wouldn't recommend against running. Just just watch your pain level. And same thing with like the lifting weights, like look at your technique. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of times it comes down to technique yeah. and not overdoing it. Um, so, um, so um, one else? of the things that I can suggest, uh, I have some experience in running. I ran many different types of distance. Uh, this week I'll be running the 5k. Looking forward to that. Um, I've studied running and I've read lots of books. One yeah. of the things that I offer to a lot of my patients is like a running analysis. So yeah. I take my, some of my patients and we go out running for like 10 minutes and uh, just having somebody watching your arms, your gait, your position, um, that helps out. So Maybe that's something you might be could Yeah, like getting from. your gait assessed. One big thing in running too is like your ankle mobility. Yeah. So like as chiropractors, um, we can check with myself and Dr. Emily we can check with your ankle range of motion. So like adjustments may help or maybe something that you require more arch support, such as orthotics. Or mm -hmm. some people, their foot's too rigid and they need a lighter shoe. So there's tons of like stores you can go to as well that specialize in running that you can get, you know, a gait analysis and a, a pair of shoes that's like tailored to you. Okay, so since we're talking about shoes, let's talk about heels. Heels are uh, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you gotta give them a chance. Yeah. Here. <laughs> do you think heels are good? They look good. <laughs> do you have heels? I do. But, uh, <laughs> probably like a couple times a year. I do you wear heels? heels? <laughs> Not really. No. no. <laughs> uh, I'm tall enough. I'm tall. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got the height. Really. Yeah. <laughs> so why are heels so bad? Well, your, your foot's not really, you're supposed to kind of bear weight on the three points of your foot. It's like right, like the ball of your foot, you have two points on the inside and outside, and then your heel. Mm. So you're meant to kind of disperse your weight in like this triangle, which is another thing that orthotics help with. But when you're in a heel, you're kind of putting all the weight onto your toes. Yeah. Um, you kind of also end up with this kind of lean forward. So like your calves look good because they're contracting, your, your glutes are firing and everything. But you're leaning forward, so that's changing your whole center of mass. So yeah. a lot of females already it's have... It's not very natural. It's not natural. <laughs> and a lot of females looks already great. <laughs> like hyperextend their back. Yes. And now it's kind of forcing more of that. So it may look like a good, strong posture, like kind of model <laughs> position. Yes, yes. But what it's doing to your feet isn't good. And especially like people who work retail, like we were talking about, like standing in that position all day. Like is, is there a higher like, chance of bunions with heels? Do you know anything about that? There is. So like if there's not enough room in your foot for yeah. sure. And like I said, for how long you're wearing the shoes. Because heels so, aren't usually designed for like space and convenience. No. Yeah. And you want, like we were talking about the mobility of the ankle in running. You want your big toe to have a certain amount of mobility too. Like mm -hmm. when you're pushing off when you walk. So I can tell you that when you're walking in heels, you're not pushing off with your toe how you're supposed to. So okay. not only bunions, but it can lead to things like plantar fasciitis or yeah. just pain under your foot and uh yeah okay we're, we're we're going in a very like uh exercise and shoes and all that um i guess let's keep going with that <laughs> <laughs> um yoga let's talk about that okay because yoga is very popular and um and a lot of people are uh they find that if they stay on top of their yoga uh, that uh, they can avoid a lot of the backing. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Is yoga a good solution for reducing lower backing? Yeah, let us know any yogis out there who do a certain type of yoga maybe that you found it very helpful. And what's your favorite yoga position? <laughs> your favorite yoga <laughs> position? <laughs> what's your favorite yoga position? I'm not really a yogi. <laughs> okay. okay. But um, I like handstands. Is that a yoga position? be incorporated yeah like everyone can agree we like child's pose you just gonna relax so yeah so yoga like a, a big proponent of yoga if there is a flexibility portion that you're getting more mobility in there and stretching out your muscles um but there's different types of yoga there's ones that are more relaxation based and there's ones that actually provide a lot of core work mm -hmm. so you can actually sign up for yoga classes for low back pain they have ones that are more related to pregnancy so oh, yes. 
It's one of those it depends things because there's so many types of yoga. Um, Let's say you are maybe a little bit more on the flexible side. <laughs> And you don't really like to do weights, you like to go into your yoga and you can really like stretch mm -hmm. and all that. Could there be any tr problems with doing yoga? So there could be some, like we were talking about alignment before. So if like your low back is really forward and you tend to hyperextend, there's certain yoga poses that, you know, have you bridge or bend backwards. So you might be overdoing it in a certain way and actually leading to further like instability mm -hmm. in those things. So it's good if you're going to start like, a new exercise program, even if it is yoga, to possibly get assessed first and talk to a health professional, such as a chiropractor or physio who has experience with that. Because if there's a lot of core work, then you're going to be stabilizing things. But even I've had patients where they have a shoulder issue and it's aggravating that and that's leading to the neck and then subsequently, you know, like aggravating their back. So mm -hmm. a lot of yoga instructors will kind of come over too and give you cues and might push you too far. So, um... Again, like that whole supervision thing and being able to tell your instructor, like to let you kind of go through the motions and trust your body for those things. Okay, so let's go with one final question and this will lead us in talking a bit more about chiropractic yeah, because that's what you do. Um, the best time, so probably uh, when people think of addressing lower back pain, a lot of times the first option comes to mind is chiropractic. Mm -hmm. um, the best time to start chiropractic care um, would be as an adult, would be when our bones are completely uh, done growing and we have reached that stage in life. And uh, is that the best time? Is that like when we should start looking into doing chiropractic? Well, often that's when people tend to search out something like chiropractic because that's when many adults first experience low back pain. So often, like in our society, you'll come in once you have a problem and then try to find a solution. But actually, as a kid, if you go in when you're growing and you're going through all these growth spurts, it can help, like, adjustments can help your spine grow, like, more optimally. So that when you're going through these growth spurts and changes and growing pains, like pains in the knee, pains in the low back, you can get adjusted throughout to help ensure that you grow correctly. Because, you know, you play sports when you're younger. You take a lot of falls. Yes. You sit in school a lot of the day, or maybe you are like more active for a kid and do more competitive sports. So you're going to have injuries and you're going to have different strains on your body. But as kids, you might not feel the pain. So it's more like a preventative approach that I would absolutely like get kids checked out. Yeah, I, I had a friend growing up uh, where all of a sudden he grew very, but he was yeah. like all legs. <laughs> like, yeah. His, People grow like one foot in the summer. Yeah, and, and he was very it. like awkward kind of looking, but eventually things kind of caught up and like we don't always grow all perfectly proportioned and all that, yeah. but uh, he often had lower back pain. Yeah. And now like I could understand like he was really like, his muscles hadn't, hadn't had time to adjust, his legs, everything. He had grown so fast. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, he had, uh, he was all often complaining, couldn't do, couldn't come out and play as much, couldn't do sports because, uh, he, he just was in pain. Yeah. Well, and I think pain's not the only reason, right? When you're growing, you can get changes. Like you said, growth spurts, it can affect things like your balance and there's a lot of neurological changes going on. So chiropractic adjustments can help your, your nervous system function and develop more optimally as well. So that can prevent other issues as you age. And, and like mentioning things like growth spurts, like if you have, for example, a leg length difference, everyone has one. Mm -hmm. That's something that you can more easily correct when you're younger. Because you are still growing, the body will more easily adapt to that type of thing. Or yeah. something like we mentioned with like scoliosis. Yes. Curves in the spine. So scoliosis, like it can happen for a number of reasons. It can be kind of idiopathic, like we don't know what the cause is. Yes. Um, it can be functional, so like based on something like a leg length. Um, and it happens a lot in females, like adolescents especially, when they're going through um, like the start of their menstrual cycle. So a lot of hormonal changes are happening. So same thing, like once you're an adult, like you're saying like, you know, kind of they're growing, it's really hard to change a scoliosis or completely correct it at that point. But if you catch it when the child's still growing, you know, there's adjustments you can do, there's bracing, there's exercises. So again, usually scoliosis, it might not be painful when they're a teenager, but you'll start to notice like rib humping and different changes that will likely become painful as an adult. So mm -hmm. if you catch it earlier, there's just, there's way more treatment options and there's different things we can do for it. To... Okay. Yeah. 
So these were general questions that I wanted to bring to kind of start the conversation. And uh, if you have more questions that you'd like to, uh, uh, that we didn't get a chance to touch on, we, we're gonna keep going, we're not done. Uh, but if you wanna write some of your questions throughout this, uh, please feel free to write them in the comments below. Uh, we have a camera person who's helping us in the back, so she's great. And she'll let us know if there are any questions. Um, so uh, now that we're kind of done with the question, I was wondering if you could kind of briefly, uh, because there are people out there that might know nothing about chiropractic, have maybe, you know, they've had a lower back, they're interested, they're really unsure about cracking, or unsure about all the things. Uh, can you briefly, quickly explain a little bit, what is chiropractic, how does it work? So like chiropractors, we have a lot of training, just generally we call like the musculoskeletal system. So the muscles, the bones, the joints. So. Like for example, I have a spine here. So most chiropractors, that's pretty sad. But most chiropractors focus on the overall like alignment of the spine because that's where all your muscles and your ligaments attach. So when we perform adjustments, we're trying to get the joints moving better. Um, and the chiropractic term for these misalignments that happen in the spine can be called a subluxation. So when these subluxations or misalignments happen, that can cause pain, but it can have effect too on like your muscles and everything like that. So we're trained in correcting those things and then providing exercises in different kinds. We work with other health professionals as well, such as acupuncturists, to kind of get your body functioning more optimally. Because if there's something wrong with your spine, like we talked about, that's the core, that's your center, mm -hmm. it can affect everything that branches out from there. So we spend a lot of time training in anatomy and in correcting the spine, but we kind of work on all the joints of the body, so. Okay. Yeah. So you said anatomy, and uh, I want to talk about uh, probably like the number one word out there that a lot of times you hear about uh, with lower back pain, and it's sciatica. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, I got the sciatica, I have the, I just, it caught me, I got it. It's like this disease, yeah. I caught it. It's like, I caught a cold, I caught <laughs> sciatica. Like any, uh, any pain in the leg, it's like sciatica. That's I have sciatica. So yeah. can you explain a little bit more about sciatica? What is it? Like how, like, uh, do we have multiple sciaticas? Like, yeah. <laughs> so sciatica comes from, it, people are usually talking about the sciatic nerve. So your sciatic nerve, it forms from different nerve roots or parts of nerve roots in your spine. And it kind of forms into one nerve and goes down the back of your leg. So most often people talk about sciatica, they are talking about pain, sharp shooting pain down the back of your leg. Yeah. Um, it is often related to the spine, but it can also be caused by different things too, such as a very tight muscle. Some people have heard of the piriformis muscle. Oh, like, yes. oh I have piriformis syndrome. Yes. So the sciatic nerve travels all the way down your leg, but it can get pinched or trapped at different sites. So the spine is one of the most common ones. It can happen with degenerative change where you're getting arthritis in the back, so that nerve just doesn't have as much room to move around because you're misaligned and degenerating. Um, but you can even get like a disc herniation or disc bulge, and I know that's a different topic, but the disc itself can push on the sciatic nerve and create those same symptoms down the leg. So mm -hmm. it can be, those pains can be caused by different structures. So it's important to like get assessed and find out what's causing this pain down the leg to find kind of the proper solution for it. And what are some of the ways that you assess? So we would do like, we would assess the spine for movement um, and look for like subluxations and misalignments, right? Because if the spine's out of line, you can't expect the muscles to be in their proper positioning or acting correctly. Okay. So once you've kind of checked out the spine, you can feel the different muscles, do some muscle testing. Um, we do x-rays as well on occasion. Yeah. Um, not all chiropractors take x-rays, but if you're not responding to a, to a treatment or you've had pain for a very long time without, usually most things tend to go away even yes, if left yes. untreated. Yeah. So an x-ray can be a really good way to pick up on, like I said, degenerative change, um, any kind of traumas that may have taken place, or just if there's something more serious going on okay. to kind of rule those things out. And then uh, and how long it can does, be scary when you have that pain for the first time. So How long does it usually take to correct or to have a uh, sciatica go away? It really depends on what it's caused by. Like if you have a disc problem, usually in about six months, it's like self-limiting and mm. it will take care of itself. But no one wants to take six months to, so six months? to get better. Yeah. And wow. to have that kind of pain because you're, if you can't go to work for that six months or you're not moving properly, you know, if you're not moving, that's going to lead to other issues. So 
with treatment, it can usually resolve within the initial pain can resolve within a few weeks. Okay. But it's uh, it's better to catch them in with that early. So even like the first sign of t- too much tightness on one leg, or maybe some people get some numbness in the foot, that could be the first sign, and you assume it'll just go away. But that's not always the case, and it can kind of progress from there. Okay. Um. Let's, there's so many things that we could talk about. Bulging yeah. discs, <laughs> is, is well, muscle, types of muscle spasms, uh, even like peripheral neuropathy. Uh, um, pick like what? Pick one more that you think that we should kind of quickly touch on. Well, I like the idea of like the disc herniations and yeah. Bulges. So bulging discs, disc yeah. herniation. Uh, because... So what is that? Is that an explosion in your back? Like... No. So so I'll show you on here too. So. In your back, between all your vertebrae, you have these discs, and these discs are like little shock absorbers. Yes. So when you walk, they compress and they take different loads. They can also handle a lot of shear forces side to side. So when you're bending and twisting, mm-hmm. so if you're lifting like a heavy box at work, something like that, that can put some stress on the discs as well. So they're meant to endure stress, but to a certain amount, everything can reach a breaking point. So yes. the discs are kind of like jelly donuts, I like to think of. Yes. And as you get older, you have less and less jelly inside that donut. So oh. actual disc herniations usually only happen until you get you're about 35. You can't really get more. You can no. try to stay hydrated. There's certain nutrients like um, like different omegas and things like that, glucosamine, proteoglycans, all these different supplements you can take to try to maintain the integrity of your disc. Yeah. But basically, as you get older, a true herniation doesn't necessarily happen anymore. Um, as you get older, oh. you're more dealing with like degenerative disc disease. So, so it's more you, something what, that's gradual. What age that you can't really have? A... It's usually like 35, 40. Oh. You're getting to the point. I'm past that... 35, so. Yeah, so <laughs> no you're probably herniation. less likely to have a to have a herniation at that but point. But now means disc disease. <laughs> you can get so degenerative disc disease is when the disc gets smaller. Oh. So you might have disc disease and you never you didn't know you had these disc bulges because they don't always come with symptoms. Because basically, when part of the disc pushes out. It, can, it may push on a nerve or it may go completely undetected until you go to pick up that box and suddenly you reach a breaking point and feel like pretty excruciating pain. So disc herniations, as I mentioned, can be one of the causes for sciatica, which is like, as you mentioned, it's actually more of a neuropathy because the sciatic nerve will to nerve. Yes. So it's just one of several nerves that can be affected when you have a disc issue. Um, but when you have a disc problem as well, what happens is you often have pain more on one side, so you might lean away from that side to kind of take pressure off of that disc that's taking up space. So you might end up walking kind of sideways, or I see people all the time, they walk in kind of leaning forward or leaning back because they're like, I feel like I can't straighten up, or I feel like I can't lean forward because it's going to cause them more pain. So that could be a good sign that something's off with the disc. Um, and when you're leaning away from the painful side, that's what can sometimes cause the muscle spasms. So it's hard to know sometimes what came first, mm-hmm. but that's why you, you need to do a full exam to kind of find out if there's a muscle spasm, like why is that? If you can't stand up straight, why is that? Things like that. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about posture. I wanted to talk about all sorts of things, but I want to keep these not so long. Like yeah. last time we went for like, like an hour because there's so, so much to talk about, right? Um, but what is like the one thing as a chiropractor you wish that people knew um, to help them with lower back pain? I wish that they knew that it was, I guess, often preventable. So we talked about like different types of exercises before. So there's a few exercises that are kind of my favorite. Okay, like what, can you name one? So there's one called, yeah, so there's one called uh, the bird dog, where you're kind of, you're kind of on all fours. Some of you may have seen this before. Okay. So you're on all fours and you lift one arm up and the opposite leg. Oh. And you try to keep your pelvis level. So it's a really good one because it works on your core. Yes. But it allows you to use your arms and legs on a strong core. Is it also called the Superman or something like that? There's one called the Superman. Well, you can do it on all fours, but there's another Superman that I want to touch on actually that you're lying on your stomach and you're doing more of a big low back extension. Oh, yes. yes. And that can put a lot of compression on your low back, particularly the disc. So a good way to tell if like a core exercise you're doing is good for your back Mm -hmm. is if you can kind of maintain what I call the neutral spine. 
So it's kind of like if you're able to maintain a slight curve in your low back without hyperextending or bending too far forward, it's more likely to be a safe position for your back. What about crunches? Is that something that's safe? Again, crunches, for instance, if you're on I want back, a good ab, I want to do strong yeah, abs, so I was told do a lots of crunches. So a lot of people get wrapped <laughs> up in like the eight pack, right? Yeah. It's called your oh, rectus abdominis. Oh yeah, your eight pack, your six pack for some. Can we get a 12 pack? <laughs> yeah. So these muscles are more like kind of superficial and out here. The muscles that help prevent low back pain are actually the ones that attach right along here. So there's a lot of different Latin names for them, but basically they provide segmental stability. So they provide stability bone to bone. Because mm -hmm. if you get too much movement or you have a disc issue, if things are moving too much, that's what's gonna cause pain. So one of the big muscles that can actually help prevent low back pain, not just make you look good, yeah. is the diaphragm. So I know oh. when we talked about the neck, we talked about belly breathing. Yes. So something like the bird dog, when you're doing that exercise, if you can take a deep belly breath, and then on the exhale, do the exercise, now you're recruiting all the muscles of your core and you're really training training that area. So same with like a sit up or a curl up. If you just take a deep belly breath, let go and lift your shoulders off the ground, yes. that's enough to engage your core. You don't have to go all the way up. You don't have to be like on one of those incline machines at the gym where you come all the way up and are touching your toes. Like a lot of people who can do those can't even necessarily activate their diaphragm and their core. So mm. those people may be at further risk for low back pain. So again, it's good to start with a personal trainer or start with a healthcare professional that can show you different cues and what muscles you're trying to activate. That's awesome. When you're doing these exercises. As an acupuncturist, uh, <laughs> I was thinking about what was the one thing I would want people to know. And like our story in, in acupuncture, we talk a lot about circulation yeah. and blood flow. And if we can encourage more blood flow to that area, we can supply the jelly, we can supply yeah, the disc, we can supply the muscles. The muscles. Yeah. And really think about if you're doing something that's cutting off circulation. So if you're doing, like if you're sitting for too long in a certain position, then that could be breaking some of the circulation. Yeah, like I've um, stood up after sitting for a while and yeah. my legs numb. Yeah. I don't have sciatica. <laughs> I've cut off the vessels in my legs and now my leg feels numb. So I'm not going to sit there and freak out that I have pain, but... It's from the position I was in, from yeah. the lack of blood flow, because the blood supplies all the nerves too, so it's yeah. very like related to work together. So as an acupuncturist, I'm always a very strong encourager to help pe to show people how to move, to constantly be moving, moving well. Also, yeah. uh, it's great to move, but uh, and we're not always going to move perfectly, and we're not always going to be in a perfect squatting or in a perfect. Sometimes it's going to be a bit incorrect, but being able to be in those type of movements uh, and still do it well and not hurt yourself. Um, so that's the one thing as an acupuncturist, I would say move quite a lot of different variations mm -hmm. and, uh, and make sure that you have good supply of blood. Yeah. Um, you know, on another note, I know I said one, but uh, mm -hmm. as an acupuncturist, we're never just looking at one area. Because what's very close to your lower back pain are maybe like your ovaries or, or your intestine or yeah. your kidneys. You know, in Chinese medicine, we talk a lot about kidneys related to lower back. Uh, your adrenals, we talk a lot about that related to lower back. So sometimes people come in and like, yeah, I have lower back pain. And uh, we look at beyond, we look at, well, are you stressed out? Do you have pro proper bowel movements? Are you able to go to the washroom? Are you able to have a good cycle? Oh no, when I have my period, I have more back pain. Yeah. So all that comes in into our consideration of how we... Well, and there's certain things too with, like on the chiropractic side, or like, we call it like viscerosomatic, where you have certain organs too that can directly refer pain yeah. to the back. So, and like uterine issues, like prostate. Again, it's not something that people like to talk about, but like prostate cancer, often the first thing is pain in the low back. Yeah, and um, like prostate does happen. Kidney yeah. stones, they do happen. Yeah. And you get pain right along your flank. Like, I must have pulled a muscle here. I must yep. have done something at the gym. So that's another thing, too, is you can make sure that there's, like, quick tests or signs that if it's something that's an organ that's causing the issue, you know, we can refer you to the proper people as well. Or mm -hmm. if it's not something serious, then acupuncture can help quite a bit mm -hmm. in restoring that organ function and getting you out of pain. So Okay. Um, so... 
we're gonna wrap it up pretty soon. Is there any final things you'd like to touch on before we end our our workshop or a little? Yes, no. We talked about exercise. Talked about a lot of different things. Yeah, I guess just like the same thing. Like if you're having a little back pain or you're interested in preventing it and just understanding how your body works, you know, come and see one of us at our locations and get a full assessment. Cause same like you said, you know, acupuncturists will take a full body approach and look at like why is that pain there. Same with chiropractors, we like to look at the joints like above and below. So, so many yeah. times people say, I have pain in my hip and it's actually like their buttocks. So they have weak glutes or it's coming from their low back. Um, if you have a knee issue, that's gonna affect your hip, that's gonna affect your low back. So it's good to see someone that's gonna take in the full picture. Yeah. Because you know, back pain it happens in like 85% of the working population at least once. So it's good to understand like where that pain's coming from rather than you know panicking because it's something new for you. So a lot of solutions out there and one of the biggest things that research shows is it's good to work like interdisciplinary with you know different health professionals and that there's so many other things to try before you try things like naproxen or other painkillers or advil like there's different options out there um, before you have to turn to medication yeah and i don't think a lot of people are like oh eager to turn to medication they're just lacking maybe some of this information and yeah aren't aware that maybe chiropractic or acupuncture can help and uh and that's partly why we do these things we want to you know educate and give more information and uh we would love if you could share this with other people we always ask, uh, yeah. and uh, we always do a contest so that it, within 24 hours, if you were one of the person who shared this video on your Facebook feed, um, you could get a chance to win a prize. Uh, so the prize, since we've been talking so much about chiropractic, we'll give a, a free checkup uh, yeah. for chiropractic. So the first, uh, we'll do a draw with, by, next, by tomorrow night. I'll draw whoever shared this and you could win a free chiropractic examination examination yeah. whether you want to go to orleans or our downtown location uh, we'll arrange that for you at no cost yeah so 24 hours to share this video and like, again coming in for an assessment chiropractic treatment like it's safe it's effective like a lot of people don't know a lot about it that's why we do these sessions but you know come on in we'll have a discussion i like questions about different things like exercise like what is an adjustment how does everything work and you know we take our time and we like to explain everything before yeah. we jump in and make sure you understand like how what's happening to you is affecting your body and your health and basically the options available to you so yeah and Hope like the, I, there's so many people that I interact with that like after I have tried this they're man I, I, I just wish I would have known this 20 years ago I yeah. wish I would have been informed on some of this information um, so you know, so many people are like, how long did you pain? Like a couple of years and you know, they, they've gone to videos where they've tried just exercise or they've tried just massage, but it's only really been temporary solutions. So sometimes it's good to just explore the other options and then it may not work for you ideally, but it could be like, like life changing to yeah. be honest, not trying to exaggerate here. Of so many people, no, but I like, wish I would have come in sooner and yeah, checked you guys out. This pain, this back pain, the pr uh, if you are in back pain, there's not a lot of things you can do out of life. Yeah. And a big, you know, a big, I'm a huge fan of quality of life, of enjoying yeah. life. And uh, if I'm stuck on a couch because I have so much back pain, I can't, you know, I've heard of people having all sorts of vacation plans, all sorts of, yeah. you know, golfing trips, all sorts of activities, wanting to go and all of a sudden because of back pain, um, they can't go. They can't go and participate. Yeah. And it's, uh, and it's something, as you mentioned earlier, it's, can be prevented yeah so um like forget like just work like of course we all need to work to make a living but traveling being able to play with your kids yeah. your grandkids just going out like taking care of your home just activities of daily living like all that kind of stuff and yeah quality of life is a big thing for us so i signed up for my 5k nice. i want to be in good shape for it i yeah. want to feel good uh but it, like if my back seized up uh and then my race is done i can't go anywhere. yeah so Martin would have someone to turn to. Do you guys have someone you can go to? Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for uh, for listening, and we hope you found this useful. Uh, again, please share this with others. And uh, next time we'll be Hannah. Hannah and I will be talking about fertility. So awesome. a huge topic related with acupuncture. It's been shown that acupuncture is one of the best uh, alternative to help assist that. 
and uh, we'll give you a lot of information on that topic. Look forward okay. to seeing you next time. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.